So Justin, how do you expect people to pay their bills now? You remember, you told them that debt had no consequences, that interest rates would be low for long, and people could borrow as much as they wanted, and there'd be no problem. And now, in, a, in the span of a year, interest rates have gone up by four and a half percentage points, a 19 times increase in barely a year. Canadians who believed Justin Trudeau enough to take on monster million dollar mortgages in order to afford the inflated homes that they had to buy in formerly affordable communities now don't know how they're going to make their monthly bills. We already see Canadians experiencing six and seven hundred percent, uh, sorry, six and seven hundred dollar monthly increases in their mortgage payments. And according to the Bank of Canada, over the next three years, a large share of Canadian households will see their mortgage payments go up by 40 percent. I want you to think of what that means. If you're if you're paying three grand a month, you could see your mortgage payment go up by fourteen hundred dollars. That's over fifteen thousand dollars a year for a family that brings home 80 grand after tax, that vaporizes a quarter, or in some cases even a third of their entire take home pay, not for mortgage payments, but just for increases in mortgage payments. Now, we have, after eight years of Justin Trudeau, the most indebted households in the G7, over $2 trillion of household debt. In other words, household debt is equal to the size of the entire Canadian economy today. Think of what this means mathematically. Every one percentage point increase in interest rates equals one percent of our GDP. A two percentage point increase, two percent, which is more than the average annual growth of our economy. We've had a four and a half percent increase in one year. This is on the verge of becoming a crisis. And that is an overused term, but I want you to consider this. The people who took out million dollar mortgages in 2021 and 2022 will be up for renewal after their five years in 2026 and 2027. As these hundreds of billions of dollars of debt collide with the massive increases in interest rates, there will be a severe default crisis. That is not according to me. That is according to last week's report from the IMF which says that Canada is the single most at-risk country for mortgage defaults of any country in the G7. Wow. Justin Trudeau, you are and your spending, your out-of-control debt and taxation are leading us headlong into a full-scale financial crisis, and I will not let you do it. Now, it, it is true that the government does not set the interest rates, but it does set the policy that drives inflation, which forces the bank to raise interest rates. And if you don't believe me on that, I know I've been saying it like a broken record for three and a half years. If you don't believe me, then listen to the liberals themselves. John Manley, John Manley, the former liberal deputy prime minister and finance minister, said that Justin Trudeau by spending all this money and running all these deficits is putting his foot on the inflationary gas pedal while the Bank of Canada is pressing down on the brakes with higher interest rates. Stephen McNeil, former Liberal Premier of Nova Scotia, recently said that it is in fact domestic deficit spending that is causing the inflation and not some global factor. Indeed, the governor of the Bank of Canada has said that the inflation in Canada today is a domestic phenomenon, not something Justin Trudeau can simply blame on the rest of the world. Other bank governors and liberal insiders have now admitted the exact same thing. So in other words, the domino effect is he is creating by running these deficits is that he drives up inflation, which drives up interest rates, which could drive up defaults. What do we do to save Canadians from this financial catastrophe? The answer is to reverse the policies that got us into the mess in the first place. Absolutely. And look, we thought that the Liberals agreed because uh, it was only six months ago they put forward a fall economic update which promised to balance the budget by 2027. Now he says budget balance, balanced budgets are dangerous. Well, only six months ago he said he was going to do it. 
This is not a promise from eight years ago when he ran for office on all of his lofty uh, promises and uh, unrealistic commitments. This was six months ago when his finance minister wrote her, her fellow colleagues and said, you'll have to find savings to match the new spending. And she said that deficits pour fuel on the inflationary fire. She was absolutely right up until the point where she introduced a budget that poured $60 billion of inflationary fuel on the fire. That's $4,200 in new inflation for every family in Canada. Well, conservatives are fighting back. We have announced that we are going to use every parliamentary tool in our toolkit to block this disastrous, risky, and inflationary budget from passing until the Prime Minister makes the commitment to balance the budget in order to bring down inflation and interest rates. And today I am announcing that I will be on my feet at roughly 7 p.m. to stand up against this budget, and I will keep speaking and keep speaking and keep blocking this inflationary train wreck until the Prime Minister rises with a plan to balance the budget and bring down inflation and interest rates. The way out is to bring home lower prices by getting rid of the inflationary deficit. That involves bringing in a common sense dollar for dollar law, a law that requires government find a dollar of savings for every new dollar of spending. Justin Trudeau might think that's hard, but it's the same fiscal discipline that every single mother, every small business person, every farmer follows every day. They want to spend more here, they spend less there, or they get a bargain on both. If they want to grow their advertising budget, they have to reduce their maintenance budget, or they have to find a better deal for both advertising and maintenance. That is how small businesses run their operation. That's why they balance their budgets, because small business people understand that budgets do not balance themselves. We will, we will, rate out, we will root out waste and mismanagement. We'll end the practice of giving uh, big, fat, juicy contracts to liberal insiders for unnecessary products like the Arrive Can app. We'll axe the $35 billion infrastructure bank that has existed for five years and hasn't completed a single solitary infrastructure project. Uh, we will root out waste and mismanagement to progressively and responsibly balance our budget so that we can protect our social services, but also bring down inflation and therefore interest rates before that massive bulge of mortgages comes up for renewal so that families are able to keep their homes. Their homes. Their homes are their security. It is our job to bring it home. We will bring home lower prices by ending the inflationary deficits and carbon taxes bring home powerful paychecks with lower income taxes that reward hard work, and by removing gatekeepers so immigrants can work as professionals, First Nations can develop their resources, we can pr produce our energy here in Cana on Canadian soil. We will bring homes Canadians can afford by removing the government gatekeepers to free up land and sp speed up permits to build millions of new affordable dwellings for our young people to buy. We'll bring home safety. Safety with jail and not bail for repeat violent offenders. And by ending the war on law-abiding licensed firearms orders and going after a border security and the real criminals instead. And we will bring home freedom by ending government censorship of the internet and on our campuses so that Canadians can speak freely on these matters and others. None of this is a revolution, my friends. This is just common sense. It is the common sense of the common people united for our common home. Your home, my home, our home. Let's bring it home. Thank you.